Welcome to our weekly program, The Inside Story of Chabad in America through the Mendel Archives. I, I owe a chayv to my listeners. Uh, a few weeks ago, or five weeks ago, four weeks ago, uh, I mentioned that the Shluchim uh, emailed me some um, questions since I have all the English letters. Maybe there are answers from the Rebbe, and, the, and we mentioned then about the answer about the Pope, if you remember, and also about per, per, uh, putting a stone, a carved stone in the, in the Western Wall, and uh, also the other questions that they asked, and I didn't answer yet, and I said I will. So maybe today I will, I found a letter here, the, some answers that they asked. Um, over here I found a letter, remember, if you remember, we asked, can uh, if a person that has a, makes a Seder, the Shliach, that makes a Seder Pesach, or has adult education classes, can they, should they invite every, anybody that wants to come? What if, if anybody that calls, can I come, come, or not? I mean, since they say I'm Jewish, is that enough? Uh, maybe he's a, uh, maybe this Jew is a converted to Christianity. He's a Jew, and he converted to Christianity. Can he come to the, to the group? That was a question that everybody's waiting for, and I found an answer. Also about wine. When they fabring with the people, the people are not religious, can they drink, should they drink wine together on the table? And also about mixed sitting, can they uh, sit together, women and, uh, and men? This was the question that they asked if there's answer from the Rebbe. So I did find one letter here from the Rebbe, and I think that answers everything. And I'm going to do this. But before this, I want to mention something. Since it's before Tisha B'Av, so I want to mention, uh, maybe I did mention it a few years ago, uh, Rabbi Nisim Mindel, when he was a bocher he, in Russia, he was he was beaten by uh, by uh, by uh, by two guy two goyim. They pushed they punched him, and Mamish he was in a hospital, and it affected his ears. So, and what did it affect? That he has to eat every three hours, otherwise he can faint. This is the, that's a condition. I don't know. That's his condition. So. He d doesn't know what to do on Tisha B'Av about fasting. Yom Kippur, I remember that he, of course, he fasted. He was he was in bed. He went to Nila uh, and then he went to uh, here and there. But of course, he didn't eat. But Tisha B'Av, he, he does. He didn't know what to do. I mean, he he, push, he has to eat. So he asked the Freydik Rebbe. So the Freydik Rebbe told him he should ask. A rough. What to do, Tishibov? By walking out from the Freddy Rebbe's room, he Freddy Rebbe called him back, and he smiled to him, and he says, "Forget Klugenrov. Don't forget to ask a smart rov." His rov was Rabbi Shmuel Levitnol of Asholim. It was before Rabbi Dvorkin was in Crown Heights. I don't know, this, no, this was in the 40s. This was early. Yeah, So he told Shmuel Levitin that the Rebbe told me, I asked the Rebbe about eating Tishibov, and he told him the condition, and he said, well, ask a Klugenrov. So Shmuel Levitin says, if the Rebbe says, Freg, ask a, a smart Rav, you could eat a half a day. So this is what the answer was as far as Tishibov is concerned. So before Tishibov, I wanted to mention this. Now, as, speaking about a Klugerov, smart rov, I remember my father, when he was young, maybe it was before the chasen, maybe after the wedding, he, he, he in Russia, there was a Mendel Dubravsky. Mendel, Mendel Dubravsky, he was a gun. He was a big rov. As I, th I heard that he even once spoke to Ramosha Feinstein and told, somebody told me, I'm not sure. He was the father-in-law of Rabbi Dvorkin. Who was the Rav in Crown Heights, a big Rav. So he was in the, in the, with him in, in Russia. He, he's a relative with us. So um, so my father, so he had Shimush by Rabbi Dvorkin, uh, meaning a Rav should have Shimush. Besides learning the halachas in Shulchan Aruch, you know, he should have Shimush. See how, how he conducts, how the Rav, 
and people come in, ask questions, he should sit by way, the way people ask questions, Rabbi Dubrovsky, Man Dubrovsky, this is Shimush, a person who wants to become a Rav, he should have Shimush, very important. So, uh, once a, a woman came in with a chicken, a shy question on the chicken. Nowadays, there's no questions on chickens. I, I guess all chickens are kosher. But the women years ago used to uh, take a chicken, used to make chicken, and then they, they saw something wrong. So they went to a roof to ask. So she knocked on the door. She went to Rabbi Dubrovsky, Rabendel Dubrovsky, with the chicken. There's, so Mendel Dubrovsky said to my father, you know what, you, you paskin, you say, look. My father looked at the chicken. My father says it's, it's, it's strafe. Because there's a certain place in the bone, the red, that certain place, we all, everybody knows that that's a trafe. So he told the trafe. So uh, Romano Dubrovsky asked my father, um, uh, tell me, what did you, Paskin? He says, uh, Paskin, it's, it's a trafe. It's a... So he says, let me see the chicken. So he took the chicken and he, uh, he looked, he looked in the chicken. He looked and looked in, and looked in a safe. He says to the, the woman, he says, here, take the chicken. Go home, it's kosher. My father was shocked. I mean, everybody knows that there's this place. Is. So, my, so uh, Rabbi, du, uh, Rabbi Mendel Dubrovsky said to my father, I know you're shocked. I know, so, Bemis, you're right. Bemis, it's kosher. Aber in Yiddish, du hast verkuckt, aber halten im Zemach Zedek. You overlooked the hidden Zemach Zedek. There is a tshuva with Zemach Zedek. In, in her case, my father didn't know what case, in her case, you can make it kosher. I think this is called a klugerov because api alach it's straight. But sometimes you have to be, you have to know when and what. This also re- reminds me talking about a klugerov. Um, I remember that um, what, what, 15, 16 years ago, 16, my my daughter got married uh, in Crown Heights, and I was you know when the, that day of the chasana, that day. Um, in the morning, we went to the oil. That's the custom to go to the oil the day of the chasana. I was going with my wife to the oil with the collar, and uh, I got a call that my mother passed away that day. So right away, I had to turn back, and I turned back, and there was, the levaya was that day. Anyways, so I didn't know what to do as far as the chasana is that night, and what should I do? I mean, so I didn't know that you cannot ask if you're a bonim. I thought you can only uh, ask uh, one rov, another rov, and do what you, what you decide. But anyways, I did ask a few rov on him, which I shouldn't have, but I did. So one rov says that you're not allowed to go to the wedding. You're, you're not allowed to go, even though it was after the kvurah. One rov said, you can go just to the chuppah. One rov says, you can go, but, you have, but you, you're not allowed to go in the hall, you have to stand outside, the whole thing. One rov said, let me ask you a question, he says. You know, you have to be misameach, the kala, chosen kala, it's a big mitzvah. Will your daughter, the kala, feel bad if you're not going to be there? It, will it, will it, it stir her, her simcha? I said, I'm, I'm sure. If that's the case, you can, you can go, not to sit down, but you can just be there. So I took that hetter. I think that's called a klugerov. Sometimes you have to know, even though if I were a a, a rov a plane, you're not allowed, of course. <laughs> Your mother passed away that day. But this is a, this was a, a klugerov. Another thing reminds me about a klugerov, um, you know, put him, um, I think it was, it was, it was uh, Esther Hamalka said, Lech has Christ has called go gather all the hidden and let's fast three days and three nights. If you would have asked, if she would have asked a rov, a dry rov, a locha, a rov, a regular rov, a, a, a strict, strict rov, can I fast? The rov would say, he cannot, you, you, you're not allowed to fast. Because the whole thing that Achashverish married her is because of her beauty. And when you fast, the beauty goes off. So, so, so it's a sakana, you're not allowed to fast. That's what a, a, a regular rov would tell, tell her. What happened? So Baruch Hashem, there was not, uh, Mordechai was a, uh, was a, a real, a Klugerov, 
a Hasidic Rav, and uh, Mordechai agreed that, uh, that uh, she should fast. So anyway, so I just want to mention talking about a Klugerov. Now, uh, let's go back to what we mentioned before the question. So here I found a letter. This is a letter from the Rebbe uh, to someone. Someone that is in, in Russia. He lives in America, but he asked about the Russian, uh, about Russian Jews. We'll see soon. Uh, for tactical reasons, it is more convenient to reply to your letter in English than in Russian. You may, of course, continue to write to me in Russian, but let me know if you prefer to receive the reply in Hebrew, Yiddish, or English. Okay, the rabbi writes the question that you asked. In a certain city, there are Jews who converted to Christianity. And some of them now feel an urge towards Ju Judaism and would like to join a Torah study group. What should be the attitude towards them? This is the question that Shliach asked me a few weeks ago. So the Rebbe answered, In general, each individual has to be considered as a separate case. And the criteria for uh, for admission to the study group should be an assessment of the expected result. Is the individual likely to return to Judaism by attending the Torah study or will it have the opposite effect? So you have to know beforehand. He converted to Christianity. The Rebbe explains, in making such a, a, a such uh, an assessment, two kinds of individuals should be borne in mind. There may be one who has become a missionary. In this case, he should not be judged in the scale of merit, even though he's a Jew. Moreover, it is in the nature of such a convert to, see, to seek justification for his conversion at every opportunity. Hence, he will not stop at uh, 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 distorting and misrepresenting the truth. So he should not go, should not invite him. So you have to do ask. If you, if you have to first know who he, who he is. If he is, is that kind of a missionary, even though he's Jewish, but his whole kavana is, is, to, is to interrupt, is to make them to believe what he believes. A further factor... The Torah classes are attended by Jews. Not all of whom are 100% firmly entrenched in Judaism. Some of them are rather weak and have doubts. Consequently, if these were to meet with, with the said element in an atmosphere of Torah learning and discussion, this association may be very harmful to them in view of the weakness of their own convictions. On the other hand, the Rebbe says, there is a second type of convert, a second type of a person that, com that converted, a Jew that, that converted to Christianity. Namely, those who converted not because they have been brainwashed, but for some foolish external reason, and more particularly those who come under the category of Tenekesh al Beis Rabban, I mean, uh, uh, Tenekesh al Nishbu, I'm sorry. In this case, the, uh, the prospect of helping them return to Judaism is, of course, more promising. The above are general guidelines, and each individual case should be considered on its own merits, as mentioned. So this is what the Rebbe says as far as that. In addition to this, in view of the Holocaust, which was largely an, an outgrowth of centuries-long animosity and persecution perpetrated against Jews, if there is a Jew who, despite, uh, who, despite living in such close uh, uh, place in time and place in this uh, to, to this atrocity, 
yet finds it proper in his mind and heart to become a part and to be identified with the creed and its uh, uh, proponents who claimed so many innocent Jew Jewish victim, men, women, and children, all the same, all the name of Christianity, then perhaps it may be possible to bring him back to his senses in other ways, but hardly by means of Torah lessons. At the same time, the Rebbe says, considering those among the study circle members who are so-called borderline cases, whose Jewish identity is still weak, and who have to be strengthened in their commitment to Taylor, it is easy to see how harmful it would be for them to come into close association with the elements. All the more so, since it would be difficult to limit such association to the periods of Taylor study and, and preclude them from, meet, from meeting afterwards in other situations. So this is the answer what the Rebbe gives. The question that we had about wine when inviting nine observant Jews who had been brought up in non-observant homes, is it right to drink wine with them? As he asked. So the Rebbe answered, in view of the fact that non-observant Jews constitute a wide range from one end to the other, we don't know, and for understandable reasons, it is impossible to check everyone's Jewish credentials, why enter into a questionable situation when there are many other drinks than wine that could be served in such company with no shyness involved? So when you have people that you don't know who they are, where they are, <clears throat> so you shouldn't uh, drink uh, wine, you can have other drinks. Now the third question that they had, there is a group of young women who would also like to learn Taira, would it be permissible to admit them to men's study classes or should separate classes be formed for the women? In the later case, later case would it be proper to have male instructions, instructors for them? This was the question. And here the Rebbe answers, and I'll read you the answer for this. In view of the extraordinary circumstances and difficulties in that country, talking about people that are in Russia, this question, I guess, was asked to people in Russia, but then the Rebbe says people that are here also, we'll see. I would be inclined to take a more lenient view to admit women into the men's classes. The Rebbe would be, he said, lenient. However, in order to, to emphasize the exception due to the uh, extenuate circumstances, and also in order to be mindful of the din, two provisions should be made. Even though the Rebbe is lenient, but the Rebbe wants to, to say two things here. One, to teach in a co-ed class such subjects as are incumbent also on women, such as the basic of faith, love, and fear of God, prayer, and the like. That should be one. Subjects that are dealt with the with Chesidus. And the second thing should be done to the group, that separate sitting should be arranged for the men and women. They shouldn't sit together. This would preclude also other personal associations, such as mixed dancing. And although we are speaking of persons who by reason of background are not otherwise averse to mixed dancing and socializing, it is obvious that this should not be permitted in these groups. And no heter, no permission should be given for such practice explicit or implied. Now the Rebbe wants to emphasize one more paragraph. I must emphasize again that this permission, the heter mentioned above, that the Rebbe was lenient uh, in regard to co ed study, is based on the special uh, circumstances prevailing in that particular country. It's only for Russia. There being no other way 
to save them from assimilation uh, and intermarriage. It should in, in no way serve as a precedent for other countries where those circumstances do not prevail, nor continue even in that same country when the situation improves sufficiently not to have a resource to that heter, to that heter. So we see from here that the Rebbe holds that, uh, I guess, uh, it's only in that, but usually you should be very careful when you have groups where women want to come, men want to come, so you have to really know. Now then the Rebbe finishes, turning to the rest of your letter, I will remember and praise those, those you mentioned when visiting the holy resting place of my father-in-law, St. Libemory, who's concerned for his fellow Jews, particularly in that country, knew no bounds to the point of self-sacrifice. And as our sages of the Talmud tell us, the, the shepherds of our Jewish people do not forsake their flock even after their stalkers and continue uh, intercede on high in their behalf. And we're praying for wishes, and this is what the Rebbe finishes. So this is the answer for the people. I thought I have this in mind that I have to answer them. I had a, a few calls later that I didn't answer them. Now, since uh, next week is Tishubov, so I, I want to wish you Yomi Yom Imeilu, L'sosin, L'simcha, that there should be, a Tishubov should become a Yontif, and we should see uh, the, 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 the building of the third base of Mikdosh, Bimheir of Yamenu, and the Mitzvah next week will continue our weekly program. Thank you.